Don't use the Bible as a club to smack yeah. people over the yeah. head. Don't think you can huh. memorize it and get yourself out of the trouble. Engage with Jesus. Mm-hmm. You engage with this, you engage with Jesus. That's the takeaway of, in the beginning was the Word. Mm-hmm. Word was God. It's all about Jesus. You get Jesus away from this, and you're going you're gonna to turn it into a rule book, and you're going to run out of liberty really fast. Hi, everyone. Welcome. We are going to have some fun today. This is the Joyce Meyer Talk It Out podcast, where all of us girlfriends get together. We talk about the Word of God. We encourage one another, and we really see how the Bible applies to life. Well, today, my friends Joyce and Aaron are going to do that with our wonderful friend, Lisa Harper. Yeah. Lisa Harper. Because some of the questions that everyone sent in, they are stumpers. So we're all in trouble. <laughs> the, Lord the, told me, the Lord told me Miss Joyce is going to answer no, no. all of the difficult questions. <laughs> That's what he told Ginger and I, too. <laughs> I have a problem because I heard vision. him tell me that you're going to answer them. <laughs> So that doesn't really work, does it? Uh, if he's telling all of us that someone else will answer. No. It's going to be a we quiet better, We drive. better tell the people that are hard to answer questions from the Bible. Yes. Yeah, so note. The, the great thing about the Bible is it has everything in it. Oh, mm-hmm. everything. I mean, mm-hmm. some people think about the Bible as just a, a book of rules, maybe, right. or something right. too high. I, I think a lot of people, that's... That's how it's been taught to them. Yes. Yeah. And I always, I actually have told Missy, we like to call them promises and parameters. Because yeah. I said, my little girl, I told her that, you know, we tend to think of it as punitive. And I'm like, it's all, it's all promissory. But when God gives you what a lot of times we call a rule, it's like those velvet bumpers at the bowling alley yeah. they have for yeah. kids. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. to keep you in his promises. Yeah. His right. So it's really not punitive. It's for our good. Yeah. It's just I think all too often it is taught as a rule book mm-hmm. right. instead of as a love story. And there's so much more. And love story is one of those probably the strongest aspect mm-hmm. of of what God's word is. But a lot of people are shocked when they mm-hmm. start reading. Oh, it's spicy. Because it's it is it's spicy. Yes. It's Talk romantic. Right. Yes. It's bloody and gory. Yeah. Right. It's like it's got a little bit of everything. It it's really pay-per-view. covers life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love what Lisa said. She said it's like from Bible study to Jerry Springer. That's yeah. right. Like yeah. everything in between. <laughs> all those stories are in there. Right. So what we did is we got on social media and we asked all of you to send in some of those questions oh, of the Bible stories and verses that just make you go, what? Because there <laughs> are some of those. Yeah. You sure. Know? Well, mm-hmm. Sure. Wow. What was happening there? Right. So we're, we're going to talk through some of those and see how it applies to all of us. Good. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with one that I remember having a lot of questions about okay. and letting Joyce answer it from a teaching because she she handled this in such a good way. But if you remember, there was a time when Jesus was hungry mm-hmm. and he saw a tree and it didn't have fruit on it and Jesus killed the tree. Fig tree. He's just yeah. basically like... Cursed it. Mm, That's right. Yeah. You're cursed. That's right. Mm-hmm. Poof, the tree dies. That's right. And I was like... Jesus, that doesn't sound very nice, the tr- that yeah. poor tree. Right. Right. <laughs> I felt sorry for the tree, too. I thought, well, that's not very nice. Yeah. So let's see what Joy says to answer this one first. Mark 11, 13 and 14. And seeing in the distance a fig tree covered with leaves, Jesus went to see if he could find any fruit on it. For in the fig tree, the fruit appears at the same time as the leaves. Now, prior to this, or perhaps it's in another one of the Gospels, it says, and being hungry. (laughs) Jesus was hungry, and he saw the fig tree in the distance, and he saw the leaves on it, so he went to it to get something to eat, because when a fig tree has leaves, it's supposed to have fruit. But he found nothing but leaves, For the figs had not come into season yet. And he said to it, no one will ever eat fruit from you again. He cursed the fig tree, and his disciples were listening to what he said. Now, you know, we read a lot of stuff in the Bible we don't understand, and sometimes we need to camp on top of it for a while and see what God will give us out of it because there's some amazing lessons in here that we miss if we just gloss over things and read them. Chances are even some of those things that I've already read you, you've read them hundreds and maybe more than hundreds of times, and yet you didn't get out of it what we got out of it here tonight. And so I used to feel sorry for that fig tree. 
I used to just think, now why would, it, it's not fair to curse the fig tree. It wasn't the fig tree's fault that it didn't have fruit. But here's the lesson that I get out of that. A lot of people in the world are hungry. They're hungry for answers. They're hungry for peace. They're really looking for Jesus. But you are the only Jesus they're ever going to see. We are the only Jesus they're ever going to see. Most people who need Jesus are not going to church to find him. They sit across the aisle from you at work. They go to school with you. They're in your neighborhood. They're in the grocery store where you shop. And you may have a bumper sticker on your car and maybe you wear a piece of Christian jewelry. Last night I had a real nice cross on. I got a little thing on up here that represents love. We can carry our Bibles and even keep our Walkman in our ears with all of our Christian music playing. But you know what? That's all just leaves. <laughs> what, pe <laughs> what people are looking for is fruit. You will know them by their fruit. If you want to, you can even take all the Christian jewelry off and just walk in love and be patient and be joyful and be kind. And at least if you're going to wear the stuff, put the fruit to go along with it. Don't just look like somebody that might be able to help them because you got a bumper sticker on your car, but then when they come to you, amen. You know, interestingly enough, Adam and Eve tried to cover up their mess with leaves, and that didn't work for them either. <laughs> Come on, we need a little bit more than leaves if we're going to impress the world. We need to have really good fruit. And you know what? Nobody knows what kind of fruit they got till it's squeezed. You can go, I did this one time, I went to the store and I was hungry and I bought an orange and I paid a dollar for this orange and that, that's been probably 20 years ago so that was a lot of money for an orange. And I got that thing out to the car and I was so hungry and I broke into it and it was dry and tasteless. It looked pretty on the outside, but it was so dry and so tasteless. Well, many times our lives are like that. We look pretty on the outside we got the outfit on, we got the bumper sticker, we got the right jewelry, we got the right Christian lingo, we go to the right church in town, we go to the biggest church in town. <laughs> but when somebody squeezes our fruit, when somebody squeezes our fruit, it's another story. That is such a great way to <laughs> look yeah, at that, the lap. difference between the right. leaves yeah, that right. we try to hide behind mm -hmm. so often mm -hmm. and the fruit mm -hmm. that God really wants us so to Jesus have. So Jesus cursed the fig tree because it was a phony. Yeah. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. Yeah. yeah. And it was an indictment against Jerusalem. At the yep. time, he had just seen the light. Jerusalem was religious, mm -hmm. but there's no relationship with God. Right. And so, yeah. I love that. I want. I want. I wanted to amen real loud. But I thought I might scare y'all. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it goes uh, so well with the rest of Scripture, and I think right. that's a really important thing in this. Is you know the Bible tells us that it's, it's not okay to be lukewarm. That we're going to be spit right. out at that that's point. Right. That that we have to be on fire yeah. for Him. Mm -hmm. right. And so when when you look at Scripture and we pull out one thing that doesn't make sense to us right mm -hmm. away. Mm -hmm. We have to look at it as a whole yeah, that's right. Right. because then we learn so right. much. Yeah. But right. in that's the right. meantime, we've got a lot of those one things <laughs> that we right. want to ask you guys about because yeah. there's some craziness in there. And Lisa, you you brought this up. Talk, <laughs> talk about in Deuteronomy, the, all the marriage violations, Oh yeah, the list. Talk Jerry yeah. Springer. I mean, They're that very is intense. Yeah. very intense. Very intense. Very, very intense. Specific. Um, there's, there's one in particular. As a matter of fact, I, I mentioned this in my thesis. It's in Deuteronomy. Do you mind if I read it 
real fast. Yeah. Uh, because you read this and you go, speaking of Jerry Springer, I mean, that is just rough <laughs> uh, Rooney. <laughs> it is. And you wonder, you're like, oh, goodness gracious, is this part of the Bible we're just supposed to like put in the closet and never <laughs> mention again and just get to where Jesus walks on water? But it's Deuteronomy 25, and it says that... Um, Shoot, not Deuteronomy, I knew I was wrong. Deuteronomy 28, excuse me. Um, somewhere in Deuteronomy. It, it, you're yeah. so um, <laughs> Is it maybe 22? Uh, no. <laughs> yes. Thank you. There's several passages in Deuteronomy. There are, there are, are a few. We don't know. So there are a few. Uh, if a man meets a virgin who is not betrothed and seizes her and lies with her and they are found, then the man who lay with her shall give to the father, the young woman, 50 shekels of silver, and she shall be his wife because he has violated her. He may not divorce her all his days. And in our English Bibles, that sounds a little sketchy. You mm-hmm. read it in the original Hebrew and you're like, oh, <gasps> it's if, if uh, a girl is violated— uh, uh, abused mm. by a man, sounds like he pays her dad a bribe, yeah. and then he marries her, and you're like, gross. And he's yeah. adding insult to yeah. injury, and God is advocating uh-huh. that. And it goes back to what you said. If we do not look at Scripture, some of these stories, um, under what is called the analogy of Scripture, the entirety of the Holy Writ, and you'd understand what's going on in the historical context, then you take that at face value and go, Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. <laughs> a woman is raped and then she has to marry her rapist mm-hmm. is, is what it seems to be saying. But they've just come out of captivity in Egypt, and we could call that the first iteration of Sharia law. Under Sharia law, any woman who's over the age of 12, not married, mm-hmm. and this is in their law system, she's allowed be, to be violated by any man. Wow. The consequence for the man who violates one of these young unmarried women or older, I, I would I would fit under mm-hmm. that, 60 and single, um, there's zero consequence, not a mm-hmm. traffic violation, not a slap on the wrist. Mm-hmm. But the young woman is considered forever damaged mm-hmm. and unmarriable, damaged mm-hmm. goods. That's what happened to David's daughter, Tamar. And so you go, my goodness, well, God effectively kind of steps over that cultural fence and says, no more. Mm-hmm. You're not going to do this to my daughters anymore. From now on, any of the yahoos who are considering Mm -hmm. attacking one of my daughters, first of all, you're going to make her financially independent. Women couldn't hold property at that time, so he puts the money in her father's name because legally you couldn't put money in a woman's name. So he says, I'm going to set up a bank account. You're going to set up a bank account (laughs) for her under her father's name, and then you're going to marry her, not to reviolate her, to give her a last name because mm-hmm. nobody else is going to marry her. Mm-hmm. So you're going to provide for her and you're going to protect her for the rest of mm-hmm. your life. And if you don't do that, big boy, guess what? If you break this rule, you get stoned by the community. So at mm-hmm. first glance, it reads as being cruel toward yeah. women. You get the context and you go, oh, my heavens, that's mm-hmm. a wildly pro-female passage in a culture that was very misogynistic. But that scripture, when we read things and we go, that kind of sounds crazy. It's like, well, don't just read that verse, the verses around it. Back up, look at the whole context, because God is always, from the beginning to the end, not just sweet Jesus in the New Testament, from the beginning to the end, He is always moving us toward redemption. He's always restoring our inherent dignity as Imago Dei, as His image bears. He's always mitigating evil. It's just we don't get context. There's another, this is not a marriage violation, but also in Deuteronomy. Remember, Miss Joyce, where it says, if you build a house, you have to build a parapet around your house, and you're like, what? Why? Yeah. That's, that's <laughs> a fence on your roof. And you go, okay, so if I build a new house now and I don't have a fence on my roof, I'm <laughs> sinning? <laughs> no. No, they had flat roofs in in that period of redemptive history, and they were small homes. So if you had people over for dinner, you went up on the roof and you ate. And so God is saying, when you have people over, make sure nobody falls off the roof and and (laughs) hurts themselves. It's it's caring for each other. So you move that principle forward and you go from now and you have people over. If you have kids over to your house and you have a pool and they have little kids— Make sure the gate's closed around the right. pool. Yeah. So it's not about a fence on your roof. It's about caring yeah. for community. It's all about protection and Absolutely. love. Absolutely. Okay, so then I have one that <laughs> kind of ties into this. Ready? Are you ready for this one? This is from Aaron from Fenton. Don't be looking at me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So God seems very cruel in the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. I think he just, he sounds so mean. So Jeremiah eleven eleven, for example, therefore, this is what the Lord says. I will bring on them a disaster they cannot escape. Although they cry out to me, I will not listen to them. And that is not the God that 
I hear you tell me that loves me so much. So right. why is he so mean? Well, first of all, I don't think God is ever mean. Mm-hmm. One of the things that means the most to me is that God is a God of justice. That's right. Mm-hmm. I That's love right. that. That's mm-hmm. probably one of my favorite character traits of God. Amen. I can always trust him to be fair. Yeah. That's right. And we have to remember that in the Old Testament, he was talking to a lot of not just heathens, but idol worshipers right. and people that were sacrificing their own kids to Amen. demons and. Sure. You know, things like that. And a lot of the things that we now, you know, that specifically said that God said that. But Mm -hmm. when Lisa was talking a while ago, I thought so many things in the Bible were cultural things. That's right. Mm -hmm. And people read it and think God did that, but it was really part of their culture. So for me, Mm -hmm. when I read the Bible, if there's something that I don't understand, which to be honest, there's a lot of that in the Old Testament, Mm -hmm. because you're right, God does seem to be mean. Yeah. But... I know that he's not. I know that God is always good and that he's always mm-hmm. just. Mm-hmm. And so if I don't have any other answer, that becomes my answer. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. Because right. you go back to what you know about him. I go back to what I know about him. And that's key is to have that template. I learned that from you, Miss Joyce, is that God is always good. Always. And so if you don't understand something like that, yeah. and again, you have to back up and look at the big picture. They're mm-hmm. idol, idolaters. They're throwing, as you said, murdering right. their own children, killing each other, raping. And right. Murder actually was not uh, a cultural no-no until you wow. instituted the right. Judeo-Christian principles. Right. You wouldn't murder somebody in your own tribe, but you could go across the valley and murder some guy over there because right. he looked at you sideways, and there was no there was no consequence to that. Yeah. It wasn't until we huh. get holy writ that they went, no, right. do not murder. Mm-hmm. God's the one who began to bring integrity mm-hmm. and respect and caring for one another. But at the very beginning of the book where it looks like God is a unibrowed know, librarian, when he kicks them out of Eden, Mm -hmm. that word is actually gal rosh. It says drives them out. Looks like he's mad. That word is to herd redemptively. Hmm. He's Hmm. moving them toward repentance and redemption. So God's people there are just hellions. So he says, I'm going to herd you toward Mm -hmm. repentance there's going to be discipline involved yeah. because otherwise you're just going to go right back to idolatry. Mm-hmm. So so you're, there's going to be discipline. You're going to go, no, 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 don't spank me, mama, don't mm-hmm. spank me. You're still going to get a spanking right. because that was so serious. You could have died when you ran out in the street. And But I'm moving you toward this for huh. redemption. And so anytime he looks mean, I'm like, back up. Mm-hmm. He's never mean. He's always good. Yeah. And, you know, on the broader, just looking at this more broadly, I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, The Old Testament clearly shows us how trying to live under the law increases sin. Mm -hmm. Amen. Because there was so, so much sin. You know, the things that you're talking about, about marriage. And, you know, it always bugs me that that when a woman was raped or there was adultery, she got punished and the guy got nothing, you know. Well, I don't think that was God. No. I think that was all cultural. That's right. And I think it really helps us to remember that Mm -hmm. and to always remember. See, for me, the answer to all of it becomes simple when I simply say, I trust that God is good. I know that He's He is love. Yeah. And so if I don't have to have the answer. I think when we have to have the that's answer right. to everything, yeah. that's why a lot of people find it very yeah. difficult to believe. Right. Mm-hmm. right. And I, I think um, I taught as a fancy phrase in seminary, microsmal redemption. Mm. Say that again. Microsmal. Microsmal. Little, microsmal. Little, like little, little Like bits. micro. So you see, I mean, uh, Miss Joyce preaches this all the time. You go back to Old Testament culture, the cultural parameters were so cruel. Yeah. Um, so cruel. You could beat a slave to death, and that was within the wow. parameters of the law. Yeah. One of the very first things he tells his people when they come out of Egypt is you can't beat a slave more than 40 times. Prior to that, it was 200 times and five open wounds. Mm. So he says, no, you don't You don't get to beat a slave to death anymore. Well, that that's way back in Leviticus. Yeah. Now, come all the way forward to Paul's epistles. <laughs> there's no more slavery. Yeah. Yeah. You're not just yeah. not beating each other. Mm-hmm. You're turning the other cheek. So you see this arc of redemption. Mm. And I asked one of my professors once, I was like, well, why didn't he just way back then said, yeah, don't right. beat each other? And he said, stop and think. When people have a certain trait that's been in their culture, been in their DNA for a while, 
You don't just throw a nuclear bomb at that and say do a 180. They right. won't. They'll go yeah. back it to that work. way. Right. You have to teach them a new way. Heard them and lovingly. So, exactly. Yeah, so God is always going. And it, it, Ms. Joyce is exactly right. Yeah. Scripture is predictive, prescriptive, and descriptive. Some of the things in the Old Testament are this was what was going on. God's not saying do this. They're doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. Then he's saying, no, I want you to move this way toward mm -hmm. me. And so we also have to go, is all yeah. of Scripture God breathed and for our good? Well, of course. Yeah. Are there principles you bring forward? Of course. Do we still do some of the things in the Old Testament? No. Right. No, I don't. We don't have to, before we go do a podcast, make sure every man in the room is circumcised right before we go to battle. <laughs> sure that's, I'm really we, glad we don't, we don't do have to do anymore. that. Yeah. Really and good. so there's things that you go, that was a cultural tradition. Yeah. So that was descriptive. God is saying the principle here is mm -hmm. love me and love each other well. So he's, it's just mm -hmm. we go, well, well, I wouldn't do that damn like, and God isn't telling you yeah. to do that today. Right. Yeah. You know, I, I uh, think of the, the timeline laid out in front of God, mm -hmm. and He has eternity to work with. That's right. So it's not like a line with, That's right. with infinite ends. It's, it's right. more of a circle. That's right. And He has this, this big herd of people that are so difficult that are going right. the wrong direction and doing all these things. It's not like God thinks the way I do. Well, right. I need to fix this right now. Right. Uh -huh. He knows what's best for us That's right. in that timeline That's of so eternity. Right. Yeah. And I think That's so it good. just blows my mind when I think about, to, to me, and there are probably others, those, those three major points that he knew, okay, on this eternal timeline, I need to send Redemption. I need right. to send a savior. That, that's right. That's what we that's celebrate it. at Christmas. That's it. I need for him to pay for the sins. That's, that's right. what we celebrate it with the resurrection. With Easter, what what right. a glorious thing. Right. right. And then I need to end it all and bring him back that's right. and put Satan in his place. That's right. right. So those three Second things You're right. on that whole eternal timeline, it, it just amazes me. It's yeah. incredible. And the fact that two of those things have happened right. reminds right. me how even though every day we think it could be today, but it doesn't right. seem like it will, but right. it is going to be. Mm. Oh, absolutely. And so when I look at the Bible as a whole— I think there's so much in that of right. of God's eternal view to all of this that I just right. don't yeah. have. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, and the the I love that you put it in that again that redemptive arc because there's things we know now on the other side of the cross. Yeah. David didn't know. Mm -hmm. Right. So you look at the psalmist. I'm like, they haven't experienced the first advent. So again, they're they're living more in the dark than mm -hmm. we are. Yeah. We have we have right. beheld his glory, right. right? Glory of the one and only. And so again, you see this. Okay, well, there's still slavery. There's still polygamy. There's still, but you see this movement mm -hmm. toward where God is moving us. And then as we get the second advent, there's going to be no more crying and no yeah. more dying. Yeah. And so it's like, let's keep seeing what God is doing. It's not that people are getting progressively better. It's that His plan is unfolding. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And His ultimate plan is, um, you know, we we ruined the first Eden, and now we're going to the New Jerusalem. And so right. there, there oh, is a that. progression I love that. that. Beautiful. Well, okay. Joyce and I both love sci-fi. You know, a, a little bit of mystery, a little We're bit a little of weird. But, okay, okay. And it okay. makes you know, it makes okay. me feel feel good that we yeah, have a that good connection. monster movie. There's nothing like. Do you it. watch exactly. Star Trek with her? Yeah, I've watched Star Trek, but I don't watch it with her. <laughs> Nobody does. <laughs> so, talk about the Bible having everything. I mean, right. we we need the supernatural in our lives. Absolutely. Yeah. And the Bible is definitely a mm -hmm. supernatural story. But here's one. That blows my mind, and I Aaron don't understand told me she it. Wants to answer it. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah, I love sci-fi. Okay, in general, Aaron, here so you go. Feels right in my alley. In Genesis chapter six, it talks about the Nephilim. Oh, I can't believe you're going here. This is awesome. <laughs> Somebody's okay. got to do it, right? Okay, Somebody's got to awesome. bring it up. So this it awesome. says. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also after, afterward, when the sons of God went to the daughters of humans, and they had children by them. Right. They were the heroes of old men's of renown. What? Yeah, what does that mean? It, it means that angels and and people had children, and oh. they were called the Nephilim. Yeah. And they were like big, glorious I trust God. Heroes. There's my right? <laughs> choice on this one. A lot of I hear that, and I'm like, what? A lot of theologians <laughs> think that that is where Goliath came from. Ah. And some ooh, people say it was a, a genetic 
right. um, issue, and then others think. And then do you remember after David kills Goliath, he didn't deal with all the evil? Mm-hmm. And then there's a whole second, it's not as famous as the first one, but there's a whole nother, basically the sons of Goliath that David has to deal with again, and he mm-hmm. can't handle them by himself. He needs help. And there are our scholars who think those are actually Nephilim. Wow. I, I trust God. <laughs> That's where I am. I'm like, I, I, I don't know. I, I don't Sometimes know. Sometimes I wonder if God put some of that stuff in there just to see if we would trust him. <laughs> yeah. Are you paying I attention? think that this is just well, a, a I little think, too, chest. you filter the mind of God through the human mind understanding, and then it comes out of our mouths, we're going to get it distorted at some no level. No kidding, I yeah. don't want a perfectly knowable God. If I wrap uh, my dinky mind around all that God is, that's a small God. And so there's places where I think the the most honest thing is also the holy thing is to go, he's so much bigger than yeah. my yeah. mind. Yeah. Now, God told me one time, he said, don't you realize, Joyce, if you could understand everything about me that I could know that I would no longer be your God. That's mm-hmm. right. That's exactly right. He'd there has be, to be a certain amount of be a proposition yeah. you had memorized. Yeah. You know, God is mysterious. We can't Amen. We can't figure him out. Amen. And people that are extremely not all people, but some people that are extremely intelligent mm-hmm. and they're real mental people. Mm-hmm. They have a very hard time believing. Yeah. Because Jesus said you must come like a little child. That's right. Mm-hmm. And so I just decided, after a few years of trying, to, you know, driving myself crazy, right. I'm, I'm, just, I just trust God. It trust I, God. I'm gonna, I'm gonna yeah. trust Him with my life. I have nothing better to do with it. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, right. if I get to the end of this and I'm wrong, I didn't lose anything. But if you don't trust God, and you get to the end right. and you're wrong, you've lost everything. Yeah. And so. he, what I would say to to whatever brilliant person sent in the question about the Nephilim. Probably Aaron from one. Fenton. Pre- okay, Aaron from Fenton. Um, <laughs> that was actually just my question. Actually, really? <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> well, I mean, I actually read a book on the Nephilim, and it was you? so interesting. And I'm not sci-fi, and I was still like, this is awesome. And here's the thing. You know, at the end of the book, John says— if we were to write everything there was to know about yeah, God, right. there weren't, there wouldn't be enough books. Right. Yeah. yeah. So you go, okay. The question about Nephilim is not definitively answered, but what that proves is um, the Bible is not boring. No. Very and true. I meet so many people who do think the Bible is a rule book or a textbook. Yeah. yeah. Sure. They engage with it as a proposition to be studied instead of a perfect holy God who condescends to be close to us. So Nephilim, that that's like we get to have all of eternity to go, what exactly? Okay, were there some? Where yeah. there? Were there? We get to ask God, but it makes me don't, don't ever let somebody say, check your mind at the door. God says, mm-hmm. love me with all your heart, right. all your strength, and your mind. Bring right. your yeah. questions. Bring your curiosity to God. And that has he meant won't. so much to oh, me as a questioner. Awesome. Yeah, I mean, that, that God loves me enough yeah. to let me do that. To let right. you do that. And yeah. you might not get your question answered in a way that as a human we can understand it. Yeah. What you will get is God's presence. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. And um, I love that I, sometimes with my daughter, when she because she stumps me all the time, but instead of going, Missy, I'm the mother. That's not. I'll go <laughs> because I said Honey, so. That question is awesome. I don't know. Let's think about it. Yeah. yeah. Obviously, God is perfect and knows everything, but He doesn't ever tell us don't bring your questions. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He says bring bring them to me. Makes you think about what you told me, Joyce, recently about how I I was thinking that every God does everything on purpose, which is true. But you said mm-hmm. something about how sometimes He just does things. For our enjoyment mm-hmm. and the beauty of the earth is just maybe just because he loves me and, and wants right. me to enjoy right. it. And I had to step out of my there's a solution and a process and a reason for everything. Maybe it's just it's just because he loves me. And yeah. yeah. Maybe it's just, just jumbles. Ask. Yeah. One time I saw this beautiful little purple flower that was growing out of two rocks. It was in mm. a, right. a hidden place where nobody was ever going to see it. Right. And I just said to the Lord, now, why did you put that beautiful thing there where nobody could see it? He said, because I like to look at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I, I okay. Mean, absolutely. Yeah. I, every so, yeah. year, I, I love all the seasons, but you know how at the end of winter, you're like, all right, I'm, I'm ready for yeah. it. I'm ready to yeah. warm up. And every time I start seeing those jonquils coming up through oh, yeah. the snow in Tennessee, yeah. I think, he did that for me. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He loves yeah. me, and he right. went— 
hang on a little bit longer. Yeah. Right. Spring is yeah. coming. Spring it. is coming. He yeah. it doesn't, they don't do anything. Mm-hmm. There, there's no real purpose for a jonquil except to kind of proclaim the arrival of spring, yeah. spring that it's just hanging a little bit longer. Yep. won't be cold for that much longer. And yeah. I, I do love to... Miss Joyce, that you said we've got to we've got to love him as a child. So bring your whole mind, mm-hmm. but start with the template of he's for me, he's a good God, right? His 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 will for me is for my good and his glory. My boundary lines will fall in pleasant places. So when I can't understand something or something is hard. Yeah. Moses he gets buried on Nebo. The promised land is right. There. Mm-hmm. He's a human. He doesn't know the transfiguration. He doesn't know he'll stand next to Jesus yeah. at that scenic spot and be able to see, not just stand at the scenic spot. He's in the promised land, but he's not in his jar of clay body. And I'm like, if Moses as a man had known, oh, door number two, mm-hmm. I mean, I'll pick going to the promised land with Jesus instead of yeah. all these stinky, sweaty ingrates, <laughs> he, he wouldn't have questioned, we don't have the mind of Christ Fully. Right. We right. have it. I feel like I'm like a nine year old with a speedboat. I can't really drive it. Uh-huh. But he gives <laughs> it's me a little it. dangerous. He gives me, <laughs> yeah, he gives yeah. me jonquil so I can go, he's good, he's good. Whatever's in front yeah. of me, even if it's hard, it's redemptive. You know, that's really meant so much to me. You talk about the Bible as a love story. Mm-hmm. That because I did have a time you know, like when I was much younger in my 20s, where I really struggled trying to intellectualize everything, trying to make it make sense. And then I I really did finally get a revelation of that this is the story of who God is in its entirety and the culture and everything else that goes into it. But at that point, I kind of got to a point where it's like, there's so much creativity in this, seeing it not only as divine but but also as just a wonderful love yeah. letter a gift yeah. Yeah. that there's there's everything in it that i need like for yeah. me the nephilim is like i'm just going to give you this cuz you're going to think it's really fun you're going to think it's cool <laughs> you're going to think it's cool it's going to grab yeah. your your attention and your creative and the, the beauty that he gives us and all those things they're they're just little little yeah. gifts yeah. to me I and agree. So I really had to work through a lot of these things sure. that we're talking about and okay. so and many questions. And he could have sanitized it. Oh, it yeah. could be an acrostic with perfect people with high metabolisms and no <laughs> things that are confusing. But that's not life. We don't live a right. sanitized life. I love that there's messy people in there. Yeah. I love, I, I saw this. Yeah. I'm sure you've preached on this a thousand times, but I'd missed it. Um, you know, we've got two miraculous feedings. And uh, one is more, more well known. We've got the feeding of the five thousand with one little boy's Chick Fil A lunch, and it's really fifteen thousand if you count the women and the children. After the disciples saw that and they saw the leftovers, the second miraculous mm-hmm. feeding at the first one, they said, "How can this be?" Do you know what they asked at the second one after seeing you? How can this be? be? (laughs) And I'm like, oh, my heavens, that's so me. He could have left that part out. Uh, He could have just given us the success stories, mm -hmm. but he doesn't. He gives Mm -hmm. us the messy stuff, and I think, what a kind God, because then I go, oh, I can be a part of that, people. Yeah. Because yeah. they stumbled on their he way. He shows us him. through them that he doesn't mind dealing with uh, ordinary human beings yes, like yeah. we are that are messy and have yeah. goofy questions. That's and right. Yeah. Sometimes doubt and right. sometimes don't. And, mm-hmm. and sometimes I just, we just have epic fails. I, I love the centurion who said, I believe, help my unbelief. Yes, yeah. I do too. He was so honest yeah. with God. I and I think we just I need to too. be honest with God and not try to pretend that we've got it all together. Right. But yeah. what? I don't understand whatever what all you're doing, but I love you and I trust you. And you've never been and anything but good to me. Just you've never been anything but good to yeah. me. That's I just think you know for our viewers today, mm-hmm. out of all of this, I always like people to have a takeaway. Yeah. Yes. And ma'am. I want them to just know that no matter what kind of question they come up with in the Bible, one day they'll get an answer because right. the Bible says that when we get there, we will know Him. That's right. And know Mm -hmm. everything that he knows. Mm -hmm. We'll be like him and have all the answers to everything. But I can wait until then. Sure. And until then, I can trust him and love him and believe him. And I think there are some unanswered questions in the Bible just as a test for us to see 
if we will trust him yeah. and believe him. And I it kind of so brings too. us to him because we're digging in and asking. Right. It right. keeps us close. Okay, I've got another one. It, it reminds me of what you just said. This one is John 1.1. 1, 1. The word was God and and he yeah, is God. The word, the word yes. was God. And the word, yeah. What does That's that awesome mean? One. Because it's, it's like you said, it's very poetic and it's beautiful. Yeah. But in my literal mind, I'm like, no, the, the words are, those are words, and he's God. So what does that mean? But Jesus is the word, and he is also God. Yes. Jesus is the word made flesh mm -hmm. who came to dwell among us. Mm -hmm. So he actually is the word, but he took on flesh, and he came here uh -huh. and lived among us uh -huh. and left of, his wor left of his words written down. So it's kind of his on first, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. like his like his words are coming alive through it's Jesus. A, yeah, right. It's a yeah. conundrum. Um, can we go to Hebrews? Because yeah, this is a sure. great question. You know, Hebrews talks about um, the word of God is a two edged sword. Mm -hmm. I got a little trophy from church for <laughs> scripture memorization. And Congratulations. Was this recent? No, no. <laughs> no. I, was, you know, I loved it that you said I wanted to figure it out. I, I ran scared for so long, mm -hmm. and I led with my mind, not because I have an especially sharp one, <laughs> but because I was afraid if, if I, um, first of all, I, there was some abuse in my background, so if I could figure out a room, it meant I would know who would be dangerous and would drag oh, yeah. me into the mm -hmm. dark and, and do something. Um, but I thought if I can figure stuff out, I won't get hurt. Yeah. Right. So I tried mm -hmm. to figure it out to, so I wouldn't get Protection, hurt. And, yeah. and to pose to look smart, because sure. mm -hmm. I thought if anybody looks under the hood of my life, mm -hmm. I, I'm not going to be accepted anywhere. I always felt like a fraud. And um, and so those things, I go, oh, crud, I have no idea what that means. <laughs> and I think I'll hurt God's reputation if I don't know. Mm -hmm. I was in a class, and this professor was talking about Hebrews. In the beginning was the word, my little verse I'd memorized, got a trophy for and um, he said, you know, when was Hebrews written? We were all like, well, between 1670 AD. When did we have the first New Testament canon? Uh, 392, I think, Council of Hippo or one of the smart councils. And he said, yeah, the, the word there for word is not an inscripturated Bible. They didn't even have Bibles. Right. It's, and hmm. the whole book of Hebrews is about Jesus because it's a hmm. people group who wants to go back to Judaism. He's saying, no, once you've engaged with Jesus, you can't go back to tradition. It won't, it won't give you contentment anymore. Yeah. You, won't, you won't be satiated if you don't have Jesus. So, so in the beginning was the Word, and, and the Word is a two-edged sword. They're not talking about a leather-bound Bible. It's talking about Jesus. Wow, that's really interesting. You can't wrap your huh. mind huh. around that perfect. Well, if you go on and read the rest of Hebrews 4, it says, and he judges our thought. Well, it can't be talking about Bible judges. Bible is a—that's yeah. not—it's talking about Jesus. Yeah. But when you segregate Jesus, the Word of God— from an inscripturated, sometimes leather-bound or imitation-bound or on an iPad— Promises and parameters of God. That's where we get in trouble. Yeah. That's where you get religious. Mm. That's where yeah. you you lose the relationship. Can you map your wrap your minds around Jesus is the Word, the promises of God, yeah. or I'm going to send a Redeemer. That's that's the spoken Word of God. Can you wrap your mind around Jesus is the promise of God wrapped in flesh? I can't. Yeah, we my have mind, it my mind we've big read enough, it for so long. Big enough right. for that. Wow. But you go, oh, wowza Rooney. He's talking future. He's talking present. He's talking. So what's the takeaway from that? Don't segregate Jesus from the Bible. Don't use the Bible as a club to yeah. smack people over the yeah. head. Don't think you can memorize it and get yourself out of the trouble. Engage with Jesus. Mm -hmm. You engage with this. You engage with Jesus. That's the takeaway of in the beginning was the Word. Mm -hmm. Word was God. It's all about Jesus. You get Jesus away from this, and you're gonna you're gonna turn it into a rule book, mm -hmm. and you're gonna run out of liberty really fast. It you also know, takes you to those. Go ahead. Uh, uh, no, you go. Just quickly, it just it takes you to those places where we hear people saying, "Well, God wouldn't do that." Yeah, the oh, things yeah. that are in the Bible. Yep. God wouldn't do those things. <laughs> I mean, that is literally separating God and Jesus mm -hmm. from what the Bible That's said. When right. we do that, is when we get in trouble, and it doesn't That's make right. sense. Good point. That's what were right. you going to say, Joy? I forgot. Oh, but I'm she didn't say I don't understand why God did that. <laughs> Absolutely. That's okay. He doesn't say give thanks for all things. He says give thanks in all right. things. You can say, I don't understand this. Mm -hmm. I don't know why he did it. I don't know why I was buried on Mount Nebo and the promised land is right there. 
but he's a good God. And mm-hmm. so I can rest in my unanswered question because what I really want is presence. Yeah. What I really want is who God is. I think a lot of times when mm-hmm. you get these questions that are great questions, people are trying to figure all mm-hmm. the hard things of Scripture out. What they're afraid of is that he's not real. Yeah. So they want to go, well, maybe, well, that there's an error there. It's like, yep. well, yeah, there's an error there. They wrote it for way of computers, so there's a few little textual variances. It's never about Jesus. It's never big. But they're trying to do that because mm-hmm. they're really scared. Yeah. They're scared yeah. it's not true. And I'm like, don't yeah. worry about every jot and tittle you can't figure out. Yeah. Lean into Jesus, mm-hmm. and He'll give you that peace you're so desperate for. I think that's for. so good because I think so much of it is a, a struggle to fit Jesus into our culture. That, amen. And we can't understand how those things can coincide mm-hmm. with how culture is today. Right. And we cannot reconcile the two together. Right. But that's because we have removed Jesus that's right. from that conversation. Well, so we have to point. read culture through Scripture instead of Scripture through culture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and I think there are things mm-hmm. are increasingly, and I love the world we live in. It's beautiful and broken. But increasingly... Um, we, you know, America was founded on Judeo-Christian principles. Well, we're a post-post-Judeo-Christian principle world. You don't have even civil litigation that's based on the principles in Scripture anymore. So we all panic, and I'm like, the gospel was always countercultural. Mm. Go back to Greco-Roman times. Don't be afraid. Yep. He's given us a template for how to live in a world that doesn't agree with God's Word, mm-hmm. and and it, and it works. It's just we won't have as many likes as we yeah. want on social media. That's really yeah. good. Mm. That's really good. There, there are, of course, you know, it's not just Old Testament, like like you brought up. There are a lot of yeah. New Testament things, too, that mm-hmm. we read, and right. we think, well, what, what does that mean? And one of them that, that people asked about is what Jesus would tell different people. Mm-hmm. So, for instance, he told the rich young ruler, go, go sell everything. This is the only way that That's it's right. going to work for you. And he told someone else, don't, don't bury your dead father. Right. Come with me now, and right. that just seems like whoa. Yeah. You right. know right. that that seems so harsh. Right. And so questions like that, the different ways that Jesus yeah. dealt with people, how do you handle that? Well, both of those issues I've settled in my mind. What was the first one that you brought up? Uh, the first one was when he rich told the ruler. rich, the rich young okay. ruler that you would have to give everything yeah. away. Well, that was really a test for him. If he wasn't trying to take anything away from him. That's right. If the boy would have done it, that's he right. would have ended up with 100 times more than what he gave yeah, away. He that's walked right. away disappointed, it yeah, says. That's right. Yeah, he walked away that's disappointed right. because he wanted to keep what he had. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know? So that was really the test yeah. right. for the young man. And then what was the second thing you asked? Um, the one that Jesus said, don't even bury your loved one. Come with me now. Right. Yeah, well, that, that guy was just making excuses. Right. He, right. That's all. He, he was just like, well, I want to follow you, but let me do this right. first. And I want to follow you. But, right. you know, because there's, there's a story that, well, I've got a wife, so I can't follow you. And I've right. just bought yeah. right. some cows, and I can't follow you right now. Right. Let, me, let me go bury my dead father first. And hmm. Jesus is just basically saying, when I call, mm-hmm. you come. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He said, he, let, the, let the dead bury the dead. Everything right. else yes. will take care of itself. And he, he, he gets straight to the heart of whoever he's engaging with. Yeah. He knows. I mean, the 10 lepers. Yeah. It, right. Other lepers, he, he was, you know, the leper in Mark. He, his, his compassion is visceral. Mm-hmm. Yes, I want to heal you. He touches him before the leprosy has left him. The 10 lepers in Luke, he goes, go and see a priest. And you're mm-hmm. like... Goodness, was he in a bad mood? Was he hungry? Did he have low blood sugar? (laughs) But he's always dealing with a heart of whatever person he's encountering. And then he's always unveiling their heart. Mm -hmm. And so he does respond differently. Would you want a God who treats us as automatons, Mm -hmm. who doesn't know our hearts and our personalities? Mm -hmm. To me, the fact that he engages differently just underscores the fact that he's a personal God. Absolutely. He didn't come to save a corporation. He came to save people. He mm-hmm. loves people. He knows yeah. our name. He knows how many hairs on your head and how many on mine are colored. He's a, he's a, he's such a kind, yeah. personal God. And he it, loves us so uniquely. Yes. I'm sorry, I didn't interrupt no, you. Both. I just knew the answer to this one. So I wanted to <laughs> jump in on the one I knew. But that's it. That's it. Here, this is your question. Go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just I think that's so beautiful because my my story is so unique compared to your story or your yeah, right. story. And 
and his answer for how he responds to me or my needs or my fears or worries is going to be unique to how he created my heart. That's it. And it's yeah. he's not going to answer me the same way he's going to answer you, not because he's telling different answers to people and keeping us on our toes, which he does, but because he loves us so much and it's yeah. so individualistic to how he created well, us. Well, we're all unique and he deals with us in unique ways. Yeah. And you really get yourself in trouble when you look at, well, I mean, let's let's just say two single girls. Mm-hmm. And one of them, you know, prays for a husband, and in six months she's married to this great guy. Right. And another one, you know, is still single yep. at mm-hmm. 50. Mm-hmm. Well, you're either, you, you have two choices in life. You're either going to be miserable mm-hmm. or you're going to trust God. Yeah, that's right. And when I figured that out finally, or when mm-hmm. God finally revealed that to me, that was when I started getting a lot of peace in my life. Mm. Because when it comes to God things, there are many things that I cannot understand, and this is interesting to me, that I cannot understand with my mind, but I do understand in my heart. Yeah. And sometimes we don't even know how to articulate yeah. that mm-hmm. for it to make sense to anybody. Mm-hmm. But when you finally come to that point where you, you know that God is good mm-hmm. and you know that he's, that he's fair, even though life sometimes isn't fair. Right. You know, it wasn't fair for me to be sexually abused by my dad, Mm -mm. but God turned it around for good Mm -hmm. and is using it for his glory. And so I don't I don't have to try to figure out why God Mm -hmm. didn't get me out of that situation when I prayed for him Mm -hmm. to, because he did get me through it. Mm -hmm. He could have gotten me out of it, but he got me through it. Right. For the very purpose of what I'm right. doing now. Right. So right. even when we don't understand God right now, we live life forward, but we understand it backward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I that's can look back so good. at so many things now and say, oh, now mm-hmm. I get it. But mm-hmm. when we don't get it, what we get to do is trust God. Mm-hmm. And that's such a privilege. That's so good. I love that. It I also reminds us forward, but understand it backwards. That's yeah. so yeah. good. Yeah. It reminds us how we can't pull out a particular thing and let it right. put it over here right. yeah. and say, Jesus says we're supposed to sell everything that we have. Right. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But right. Pack up but, kids. You right. know, it's it's easy to get caught up in those mm-hmm. things or or to read scripture in the wrong way yeah. yes. that can really mess with our heads and our right. hearts. And so as as we're doing this, and you guys have been so helpful. Thank you. It's been yeah. really great. Looking at this great love story that God mm-hmm. has given us and let it be a picture of who he is as a whole right. and how he sees us. And a couple of scriptures as, as we talk about getting into this and, and really digging into the word and not getting trapped into some right. of the, the, the traps that Satan wants to throw mm-hmm. at us. Luke 24, 25, then he opened their minds so they could understand the scriptures. Pray, God helps us. Right. Doesn't yeah. mean we have an answer right. for everything, but he says that that he will help us. Jeremiah 33, 3, call to me and I will answer you and I will tell you great and unsearchable things you do not mm. know. Mm-hmm. There are so many things that God has for us. Right. We just have to ask him. Yeah. And, yeah. and he loves us enough to do that for us. It gets better. It gets better and better and yeah. better. One of my favorite theologians, living theologians, says if you get out of the Bible what you're expecting to get out of the Bible, you need to change your expectations. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Always bigger, always mm-hmm. better. That's There's good. always more. Mm-hmm. Well, thank you, guys. And thank all of you for being here with us, for sending in your great questions. We had so many. We could literally do this for <laughs> hours. <laughs> but this has been wonderful. Make sure that you walk it out. We've got some information online for you. Just a little bit more help, some more scriptures, anything that... You might want to take this to the next level because God's That's Word right. is what will change you and change your life more than anything right. else. Go to JoyceMeyer.org slash Talk It Out, and you can find that. You can watch all of our, our, our other episodes. We've got other episodes with Lisa with us, of course, and uh, we look forward to seeing you next time when we'll talk it out some more. Who knows? Maybe there'll be something that will just completely stump all of us then. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of things. <laughs> <laughs> Bye-bye. I can't believe you brought up Nephilim. (laughs) I love Nephilim.